All right, I'd like to call to order this special meeting of the Urbana City Council. It's Monday, August 3rd, 2020. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu. Here. Ms. Hersey. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Roberts. Here. Mr. Colebrook. Here. Mr. Miller. Jared's yeah. joining us right now. Okay, thank you. I'm here. Mayor Marlin. Here. I did want to announce that due to the Governor Pritzker's and the mayoral emergency COVID-19 orders, the Urbana City Council chambers are not open to the public during the meeting. Council members will meet remotely using the Zoom webinar and the meeting can be watched um, on Urbana Public Television or via streaming services or attending via Zoom. Um, we'll move next to public input. Is there anyone wishing to address the special meeting of the Urbana City Council? I see one hand, um, uh, Amina Payne. Hi, thanks Mayor Marlin. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. My name is Amina Payne, and I'd like to address the connection between academic underachievement and student involvement in the justice system, as it needs to be highlighted and addressed. Now, when students are not engaged in their studies, nor when they graduate from high school to obtain the skills necessary to be contributors to their communities, they are more likely to be involved in the justice system. From my Freedom of Information Act request, I understand that in 2019, there were 252 juvenile arrests. 84% were black youth. Now the average age were kids on the cusp of turning 15 years old. And out of these 211 arrests of black youth, only five were released with a warning. All others were sent to either a youth assessment center or a juvenile detention center. Now, time spent learning is the single best predictor of positive academic outcomes. Now, although, you know, feather, federal uh, within the schools, federal and state laws require educators to suspend, expel, or refer students to law enforcement for certain offenses, we know that many educators are choosing to employ these harsh measure, measures for trivial matters such as minor disturbances in the classroom. Now, Urbana School District 116, the chronic absenteeism percentage is 36% in comparison to that of the entire state of Illinois, which sits at 18%. At Urbana High School in particular, the rate of chronic absenteeism is 53%. Now, 88% of total suspensions in the 2019 um, school year were black students and students of color. 89% of out-of-school suspensions are also black students and students of color. Now the exact percentages for black students alone are 54% of total suspensions and 52% um, of out of school suspensions. But the student body breakdown of Urbana School District is 37% black, 31% white, 15% Hispanic, 5% Asian, 1% American Indian, and 10% are multiracial. This further illustrates that black students are being suspended at higher rates than their peers. So um, as well as at Urbana schools, only 4% of black students and 13% of Hispanic students meet or exceed mathematics performance levels. Yet their white peers, 34% of them meet or exceed exceed mathematics performance levels. Now, why am I talking to you about Urbana, you know, the education system? It's because this is a community issue as well. And the Board of Education and the wider community leaders must refocus on students and their needs, not fund armed police in Urbana schools. As leaders, as community members, you must urge the Board of Education to end the intergovernmental agreement with the Urbana Police Department and remove SROs, school resource officers, from Urbana public schools as the, Urbana, as the Board of Education works to finalize their budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sarah Nixon. Hello, I just have a 
question, if I may, um, just for clarity, is this the uh, city council meeting at which the uh, council is addressing the um, uh, proposed appointments for the uh, vacated uh, city council seat? Yes, this is the only, that's the only item on the agenda. Right, okay. Um, I would like to offer a comment. Uh, so my name is Sarah Nixon. I'm a resident of Urbana. And um, as an Urbana resident who has become firmly engaged as an observer with city, sorry, with the city government process, I'm disappointed that Mayor Marlin has shunned the most qualified and appropriate choice to replace retired council member Eric Jacobson. Mr. Jacobson's departure has provided Urbana with the ideal opportunity to inject city politics and government with vitally needed, with a vitally needed force for real reform. As someone who has known Julie Lout well for many years, I can attest to the fact that she has wonderful qualities as a person, as a mother, as a church member, and as a community member. And I know that if appointed to city council, Julie will bring dedication and hard work to her role. However, the city has before it a choice between a really good candidate and a stand-up candidate. Never mind the city council appointment, Mr. Hansen has proven himself time and time again to be probably the most civically engaged resident of all of Urbana who is not currently seated on a government board or commission. Beyond that, Mr. Hansen's renegade manner of agitating for reform is really exactly what Urbana needs to shake its government out of stagnation. As we all know, it is due effectively entirely to Mr. Hansen that Urbana is seeing a radical rebirthing of its uh, civilian police review board that we all hope will be an effective resource for residents moving forward. His proven commitment and dedication to reforming broken parts of the city machine is really nothing short of exemplary. And I know that Mr. Hansen's engagement with city government will continue in one form or another. In closing to Julie, um, if you are appointed, I would like to offer a couple of suggestions. First, I would encourage you to view all of the um, video recorded city council meetings and other relevant uh, commission and board meetings, uh, which as if you haven't already done so, which as you I'm sure know, have been recorded since the beginning of the, the pan COVID pandemic and made uh, readily available on YouTube. And my final thoughts for you are Please don't be safe, don't be compliant, and don't go along to get along if appointed to the City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, looks like Jizan Cruz. Hello? Can you hear Hello? me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Uh, my name is Jasan Gonzalez Cruz. I'm a resident of Urbana. Um, and I just wanted to speak a little bit to uh, policing alternatives. So when we say police are reactive, we mean they usually don't prevent crimes or dangers, but respond to them after the fact. Um, a few months ago, actually, there was a man who was stopped for intoxication while driving in front of where I live. And four police officers responded to that call. There were four men, four police officers um, giving him the intoxication uh, test, which I think is a little intimidating for one, <laughs> um, and probably unnecessary use of police resources for two. And I'm immediately uh, reminded of uh, Rashad Brooks, uh, who 
was basically murdered after uh, failing a sobriety test. Um, so I think that there are other ways to respond to calls like that. And I want to suggest that maybe Urbana look into things like that. Um, maybe doing some sort of community intervention strategies, numbers that the community can call, uh, community members who would respond to things like that. Um, because the man was arrested and <laughs> it's just unfair. Um, so that being said, I think uh, Urbana is taking a lot of good steps uh, to defund the police with the deferment of the canine police car, but they are small steps and there's a lot more that we can do. I understand that uh, defunding the police is a slow process, but um, there's other strides that can be made. First off, uh, Aaliyah Lewis, who was also approached for a police call citing domestic dispute, and that's another prime example of a time when police don't have to be the first responders. She shouldn't have charges against her, and taking seriously the community's call to defund the police means changing the way calls like domestic disputes and intoxicated driving are responding to. Um, so I'd urge the public to call Julia Reitz at 217-384-37. Three, three, to demand that she drop the charges against Aaliyah Lewis, and I encourage the council to urge Julia Reitz to drop the charges against Aaliyah Lewis, as well as the 27 protesters who were arrested on May 31st and June 1st this year. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Meg? <clears throat> Hi, it's Megan McDonald. I just wanted to say for the public, just to be more transparent, if anybody else is raising their hand to talk about police reform or defunding, just like to say stop until the next meeting. And uh, also put in my recommendation for Chris Hansen again. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll just wait till the next meeting, but I just wanted people to know that because it seems like it might not be clear. All right. Okay, I don't see any more hands up. We'll move on to the um, item of business for this meeting, and that is an appointment um, that I'm bringing to Council for Consideration for Ward 2. Um, just to summarize the process um, so that everyone understands, this is the same process for this appointment that was followed for um, appointing the council member in Ward 3 and in Ward 6. So this is the third city council appointment that we've considered in the last three years. Um, applications uh, were accepted, um, were made available to the public. We ended up with a total of four applications. Two of the applicants did not live in the ward. That left the two remaining candidates. Um, I, uh, after the application period was over, I called all the references for both candidates and had personal interviews with both candidates about an hour and a half each. The council members, city council members received copies of the application and CVs that they were provided. And then last week, the candidates provided um, public statements at the city council meeting. This appointment, once again, is to fill out the remainder of Council Member Eric Jacobson's term, which ends May 3rd, 2021. And as such, the um, uh, candidate will also take his seat on the uh, Traffic Commission, which is the commission that, that Eric was assigned to for, for his term. Um, I'm pleased to appoint Dr. Julie Lout to the position of Ward 2 City Council Member. Dr. Lout will complete the remainder of Eric Jacobson's term. Term. She's been a resident of Ward 2 for the past eight years and holds a PhD in history from the University of Illinois at UIUC, a master's in history from Miami University, and a BA in history, a secondary education from the University of Colorado at Boulder. In addition to her professional credentials and her experience in outreach and development, Dr. Lout brings a wide variety of community-based volunteer experience to the position. She's demonstrated her ability to collaborate in an open and inclusive manner through her service on the Board of Trust 
uh, Board of Trustees for the Unitarian Universalist Church. She hosts the Little Free Pantry at her home on Main Street, has raised thousands of dollars for local social service organizations during the pandemic. She's committed to achieving access and equity for all Urbana residents in terms of housing, food, education, transportation, technology, health, and safety. I believe that Dr. Lout will represent the interests of Ward 2 well and that she will make significant positive contributions to all aspects of life in our community. So I am, I am pleased to bring this appointment to you for this consideration and I would appreciate a motion to get in a second to get the discussion on the table. I'll move that we accept the mayoral's appointment for Ward 2 for Julie Lout. A second. Moved by Mary Alice, seconded by Cherise. Any discussion? Jared? Uh, I just wanted to make my thoughts known since uh, council didn't get to talk to one another about this uh, very much. Um, I think that both candidates were uh, very strong. I would have supported uh, the nomination for either. Um, uh, really uh, would like to see Chris uh, get a role somewhere in a uh, border commission somewhere. I think he's uh, proved his dedication to uh, wanting to uh, uh, have a role in public service. Uh, but I would uh, ultimately really like to welcome uh, a third female voice uh, to the council. And that was a, a large weighing factor uh, for me, including uh, all of uh, Julie's connections and uh, her statements and the things that she put in. So those are my thoughts. Dennis. Okay, so uh, I believe, um, of course, both candidates are totally uh, qualified for the position. I think I would have uh, taken the gamble and had Christopher come forward to be on council. Um, we're at a time right now where a lot of dimensional change is being requested of the city council to move forward out of uh, traditional values and standards to something that's more embracing and um, transparent and all inclusive. And uh, we've heard a lot from Chris on these topics not really any comment before this nomination has come forward from Julia. And although um, I'm sure she'll fill the role if she retains the uh, majority vote, I think I would have liked to have put Chris to real work and make him come to the council and actually put the wheel, his, uh, his uh, shoulder to the wheel and uh, assist the community in getting something changed in a democratic and judicious manner. So I haven't quite decided how I'm going to vote. Any other comments? Mary Alice. Um, I, I don't know Julie very well, but I did want to just kind of give my background. Julie, um, my first interaction with her was when she organized the um, Radical Illini, uh, which was kind of a reunion for the 1960s student movement at the at Urbana, and um, she did a really good job organizing that event, bringing in a lot of different people, both from across the world, but also uh, local students and getting the local students involved. Um, I also know her a bit from her Cheria night that she does on Friday nights, and I, I would like to say that she does a really good job of outreach to all the different social organizations. Every Friday there's a presentation. She encourages people to donate to these organizations. And so I look forward to um, her insight and the work that she's done with all the different organizations in our community. Um, and I think that that would bring a, a real asset to city council. Any other, any further discussion? Okay. Will the clerk please call the roll? Do you want, 
Okay, I'm here, but one of these days I'm going to get this thing to work right. Miss Wu? Yes. Miss Hersey? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Roberts? I think I'll respectfully pass. Mr. Colebrook? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. That motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, congratulations, Julie. And um, Julie will be sworn in in person tomorrow at the city clerk's office. And after that, she will be uh, that, and she will be seated on the council. So she'll take her seat next week on the Urbana City Council. And I'd like to thank uh, Christopher Hansen for applying and for your um, uh, demonstrated interest in the city. And with no further business before this special meeting, uh, we are adjourned. We'll move right into the Committee of the Whole, which is chaired by Bill Brown tonight. Thank you.